the shortest map in the game. One of the trickiest and fun to play around with, and you can do a lot of experiments here. Unfortunately, it's only available on challenge editors, so we can't make it past round 300. If you haven't already seen a Khan's video on this, reaching 300, then where have you been, honestly? I could do something very similar and probably reach 300, but in the spirit of not being repetitive, today we're going to see how far we can go using only the water and the corner. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I'm so close to 1k. Even if you uh, just liked for me, I would appreciate it so much. Also, don't forget to use code RAXOR in the Balloons TD6 shop. Anyways, on to the video. So to start, this map, you can technically get every single Paragon available at the time of this recording. Um, with the amount of land that you have, all the foot Paragons, I like to call them that, uh, Wizard Paragon, Enchu Paragon, Ninja Paragon, Dart, and Boomer, they can all fit on the top. Actually, when placed carefully, you can actually put nine of those towers inside with a small to medium footprint. Boat can obviously be put in the water as well, as they have enough space to put an ace paragon as well. Okay, so great, what's the problem then? Seems pretty straightforward, right? Just get all the paragons and beat 300. I wish it were that easy. On our first attempt, I decided to do more of a trial run. This run was extremely messy, but I needed a feel of how things would go. The main problem, as mentioned before, is I could just focus on farming, but when would I need damage? I needed to have a good balance of both. I decided to do a run with Geraldo first. Quincy action figure had never let me down before, so I was just going to put my faith in the action figure. I end up getting a farm and selling Geraldo for an NG with balloon trap. I was hoping to make some decent cash, but with camos also being a problem, uh, we get a ninja and rubber to gold to eventually get as much farming done as possible. I start to get my merchantman army and only about 7 which is terrible. I knew I could fit way more as I could see some extra water space. But I actually realized something. The moab was already a problem. After some attempts and uh, testing out a few different towers, we eventually get the moab down with just a sniper. A 002 to help eke out some more damage along with the balloon jetsu. And honestly, I really wasn't loving this farming. Uh, but again, just figured I would still do this as a test run just to see how far I could actually go and what a reasonable round to aim for would be. Eventually, we get our favorite trades army into a trade empire. We could fit a farm on the top, but also in return can fit three medium towers on top while small footprint towers can fit on the side. The setup for the top corner was the following. A balloon jitsu to catch leaks and camos, a main wad for mole class balloons, a shimmer on the back for decamoing, and a faster shooting NG trap and a rubber to gold. Honestly, this setup was disgusting. There wasn't really any rhyme or reason and really no synergy here. And honestly, I look back at this now and I feel pretty pathetic trying to farm like this. Ugh, it's kind of gross. But anyways, let's not focus too much on the top corner, but I'll focus on the bottom where I can at least hopefully redeem myself a bit. We sell our merchantmen and start getting our snowstorm uh, druid on our carrier flagship to eventually get another farm down here. The water here is actually quite large and a lot more forgiving, so we're able to fit a Monkeyopolis, which is a super great help to getting my other farming resources uh, and some crazy cash fast. We sacrifice a BRF into the Mon Monkeyopolis and also get an overclock B BRF to farm into a Banana Central by round 73. And we get this by selling our central market at the top corner. Eventually, we also get a Wall Street and snipers by the Monkeyopolis, so they make a little bit more cash. And we keep this for now, and finally my farming is up and running. A bit later than I would have liked, but that's alright. Nothing really much to talk about here. Uh, this setup, by the time we get to round 100, we make 804k, 
which I will set as my benchmark. If I make less than this and my setup is kind of the same, then I really did something wrong here. For round 100, we get a big plane to start firing pops for our ace paragon, since we need as much damage as we can now with the tower because the towers on the top corner aren't really doing anything for us. The other two paragons that I get are the ninja paragon set up with the grand sabo, as well as an ng paragon with the xxxl trap. So this setup was pretty good for a while. By round 138, DDTs were actually starting to be a problem. So with this, we get a degree 15 boat. However, I wasn't really sure if I needed this to be degree 15 to be honest. I was thinking the only real reason I was going to be using Navark was maybe some cash generation but mostly to hook in uh, BADs when they got close to the end. I also got a wizard paragon ready and this was another mistake. I was too busy splitting up the pops versus actually focusing on one type of tower. Uh, and usually you should be focusing one type of tower so that it can get a higher degree faster and eventually on round 147 which was shortly after uh, it was already starting to be a problem again so we settle and save up and get a degree 63 ace paragon i really wish it was a uh, degree 69 but the rounds were starting to get way too tricky at this point we get a mix of stronger tier fives as well as super brittle and a perma brew to really get my paragons up as soon as possible and I need damage and I need it now. Thankfully, Ace Paragon and Navar can hold off on their own for quite a while. We go all the way until round 192 where the setup finally starts to fail. Uh, so we finally get a degree 60 Ninja Paragon. But even with this, only two rounds later, we get stuck again. Uh, the rounds weren't letting up and so we decide to get our degree 45 ng paragon hopefully this would be enough to help me push some more rounds at least maybe 20 or 30. we were being pushed deeper and deeper into the 200 rounds where i decided on my own accord uh, it's time to get a boomerang paragon i needed the extra damage and the buff to primary towers would be nice since i had an icicle impale and a super brittle to help with damage at this point i wasn't really sure how much further I would make it into the 200s, so I also start farming up a dart. I also get some global damage dealers on the water platform, as well as a cripple moab and a glue storm. But then we were stuck again at 212, and this is where the run died. I tried to set up a few, a few more things, but it seems like the run had no more legs. I also didn't really enjoy Geraldo this time because I need something to help out with the damage more. So, with this knowledge, I go into my next run, and I decide to optimize this run, and we'll do it with Azili instead. This time, we are much more efficient, and don't go crazy on our defense. We farm up to get two balloon traps with range so I can target the traps, a mob mauler for moabs, and a double shot ninja for camos, which eventually will become a balloon jitsu. Much cleaner this time. And also because we didn't have Geraldo, we were able to get this set up a little bit faster. We are also able to fit 9 boats this time instead of 7, which already looks much cleaner. Not sure if 10 is possible, but 9 already was pretty great. We eventually sell it all for Monkeyopolis again into the same BRF and Overclock. And this time, get a Banana Central by round 65, which is 8 rounds earlier than before. Already way, way on track. Eventually, the top corner all beco will become the Wall Street, and sniper farming and a Prince of Darkness this time as I was having trouble with DDTs and ceramics. Again, some rubber to golds and my XXXL trap, uh, and both Prince of Darkness and the XXXL trap to farm pops for their respective paragons. Uh, this time, I wouldn't be flooding my board with un unnecessary towers. However, we change up the strat here. Normally, since Navark wasn't really doing anything, especially in my last run. I mean, the planes do damage, but the real reason why we get Navark is to hook in bats. So this time, we actually get a Navark for cash generation. Again, Navark makes 3.2k and an extra 20 with monkey knowledge, but I actually had to do this setup over and over 
and over again. And this is because I want to be as precise as possible and ensure I could fit as much as I could. We also fit a carrier flagship under the nave arc to put two more towers to farm as well as the farming towers I had earlier. An ultra boost is also hiding in the water at the bottom. And this would be my new setup. Honestly, it was a really good setup, especially starting on round 91. It can literally deal with any balloon, including bads, for a while. Just when HP, HP scaling started to get super high, would it be a problem? So this setup was perfect all the way until round 144, a round where I had my bad hook on cooldown so I couldn't really beat a bad. So after lots of testing, we get a new setup. On the top corner, we have the following. We get a degree 54 NG Paragon, an Arc Mage, and Prince of Darkness from earlier, a Mope Dom to start farming for a Boomerang, a Grandmaster Ninja, a Super Brittle, an Ultra Boost, and a Perma Brew, and a Wizard Lord Phoenix. In the water corner, we have our standard Navark setup, but instead we also get a Flying Fortress, as well as a Monkeyopolis, a Homeland, uh, more for the Mib for the Flying Fortress, as well as a Cripple Moab and a Spirit of the Forest, still to do a little bit of damage, but more for cash. Also, I decided to get a Zeely now. I think I could have maybe waited a little bit more, but having a Zeely hex up early was actually pretty nice. So I want to ensure that she was level 20 by the time I wanted her to be. So this setup goes pretty well for a long time. Being able to rotate between replacing turrets to beat bads to Azili's Hex and also Navark's one shot, we had a pretty good setup and pretty good number of abilities to circle through. By round 186, I farm up enough pops for the Ace Paragon, so I get a degree 69 Ace Paragon. From here, we start farming pops for the Ninja Paragon with Grand Sable. I also get a Monkeyopolis back up along with a Banana Central. Again, having another tool in your arsenal with Carpet Bomb for Ace uh, Micro was great. On round 202, we get a degree 64 Wizard Paragon. Pretty solid, as long as I was hitting the mid 60s or just 60 in general, I'd be pretty happy. I get the rest of the Boomerang Tier 5 Towers and get back to cycling through my abilities, adding the Wizard Transformation ability to the mix. However, since we're in the round 200s, fortified bads were starting to become a problem. On round 205, we hit my wall. The biggest wall of all. I had to use all my abilities for the round prior and so I was stuck. There were 5 bads this round, in a pattern of 2-1-2. Two, two. The first two were unfortified, um, and then the third one that came by itself was also unfortified. But the last two, uh, the first out of the last two was, for, uh, was not fortified, but the last one was fortified. So, after many failed attempts, I was finally able to beat it, doing the following. We get a Ninja Paragon a bit earlier than expected, a degree 48, an Energizer for cooldowns as we had no abilities and it was super important to get it as soon as possible, a Glue Storm for the bonus damage, and we needed to time the explosions for the turrets. The first explosion was to destroy the first two bats. Uh, the insides were fine, we just had to worry about the outer layer. Third one barely broke on its own, so it didn't have to worry about that, and Navark was able to catch all the insides, while the last two needed to be destroyed with two more turrets and one hook in for the fortified bat. That was a close call. We keep struggling every round as abilities are getting harder to cycle through, and we get a degree 40 Boomerang Paragon, as well as a degree 30 Apex Plasma Master. On round 228, and most of our setup was complete, until I died in round 235. So here we buy a Legend of the Night to finish this round off, and we're still safe for now. Eventually, round 238 comes and we hit our final wall of this challenge. Unable to beat any more because of ability cycling, I'm still pretty happy with how far we could go using the extreme ends of this map. If you guys enjoyed this challenge, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm almost at 1k and would love to cre uh, keep creating some cool content for you guys. 
So don't forget to send me your challenge ideas through the comments and I will see you all in the next video.